Now, tens of millions of people in the United States are under air quality alert this Thursday as smoke from Canadian wildfires drifts south, blanketing cities in a thick yellow haze. Canada's Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has described those fires as the worst in the country's history. Across the East Coast, schools have cancelled outdoor activities, airlines delayed flights and residents are being encouraged to wear masks if they go outdoors. Well, let's talk a bit more then about those images you're looking at with Rob Thompson. He's a meteorologist and a researcher at the University of Reading in the United Kingdom. Uh, Welcome to the programme, sir. Thanks for finding the time to talk to us today. Thank you for having me on. Uh, New York City yesterday had the worst air quality of any big city in the world. How serious is that? And it's clearly really serious. We know worldwide a lot of cities very famously have very bad pollution. So obviously for New York, it has a lot of traffic and so on. It's never going to be brilliant. But to be the worst in the world really is quite surprising. And pollution has really serious effects. And Sticky fires, it's the little, very small particulates. What you can see, you can see the smoke in the air is a problem, but what you can't see is potentially worse. It gets into our lungs, it gets into our systems, and particularly those with any kind of respiratory condition, it just makes it worse. Anybody with asthma like me, it's much worse. So really staying indoors and trying to keep out of it is the best thing they can do. So those are possible short-term impacts then, things like people who suffer with asthma. What about longer-term health issues from smoke like this? Well, yeah, so there's long-term consequences too from smoke and similar sort of particulates and pollutions and so on. But there's links to a lot of of any kind of long-term respiratory conditions, but also some heart conditions and cancers as well all are at least linked to pollution and even like, the IQ of children seems to be affected by pollution. So really pollution is a massive sort of a problem worldwide. Do we know, just staying with uh, these images for now, how long these smoky conditions are set to last? Well, we're certainly looking at for a few days currently, basically a low pressure system is just sort of pulling air over the fires and then across the sort of east coast of of the United States and sort of, of course, Canadian cities too that are sort of to the south of the fire, so Toronto and so on, all of these cities are basically just having the smoke off the fires pulled towards them. And we have to remember these fires are really just completely record-breaking. Uh, the Prime Minister of Canada said that these are sort of complete, sort of record-breaking fire levels. So we're talking sort of amount of Canada that's burned in an average year. We've already passed halfway and we're right at the beginning of the summer season. We're not even into when you'd expect. But climate change means everything is warmer, potentially dro- certainly droughts are drier. The system is more geared, basically, towards wa- more wildfires. So situations like this are going to become more common under climate change. So we can make a direct link then between these rather shocking images we're looking at today and the climate emergency. I think we can. I- An individual event is never caused by climate change, but climate change increases the chance of any individual event. So the chance of an extreme wildfire season is very much increased by warmer and drier situations that are coming about because of climate change. So two situations are made worse. The likelihood of any extreme event is just much more likely. So an event that would have been one in a hundred years could be one in 20 years or even more now and that sort of change while one particular event might not be necessarily linked the fact that we can get more and more events and we see them worldwide events that are incredibly unlikely to happen happening time and again across the world Uh, and just finally then your working analysis is we may see uh, more images like this not just in north america but in other parts of the world in the years to come well absolutely i mean we've seen wildfires in europe last year wildfires where wildfires the uk not far from me in in reading we had wildfires and you don't really in the UK, wildfires is not a massive significant threat. Yet last summer, with our extreme heat, we had wildfires on the outskirts of London. And this is not what we're expecting. And of course, the burning is dangerous, but also the pollution from all the smoke. It's dangerous and it transports hundreds and potentially thousands of kilometres across the world. And just because the fire is in one place doesn't mean that's necessarily where all of the problems are.
Rob Thompson, a meteorologist and a researcher at the University of Reading. Thank you very much indeed, sir, for your time today. Thank you.